So now this is going to be the numerical data visualization. So there's also three different types of of ways that you can represent numerical data. One of them is the most easiest way is dot plots. So these are usually done for small samples. So basically all it is is that each observation is represented by a dot. So for example, uh, we were looking at patient satisfaction where one is least satisfied when five is most satisfied. Um, all it's just doing is that, for example, if someone is you know a little bit not as satisfied as not terribly satisfied, uh, you will have four people. So four people here, chosen number two. Here, uh, five people were very, very satisfied. Two people were not satisfied at all, okay? That's all it is. So each observation is represented by a dot. Um, usually this is done with small samples or numbers that don't have a lot of, um, um, not a lot of unique values. So um, one one way that you can do it is, I guess, you can look at age if you really wanted to. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So let's let's take a look at it. So if I go back to our graph um, or to our data, let's access a dot plot. So let's go ahead and click on graph. We're gonna look for dot plot. Here's dot plot. Um, let me see. What can I look at? Height probably not the best, but um, I don't think I asked for age. Uh, but what we can maybe look at is maybe we can look at the birth year. Let's see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and compute this. Um, it's kind of weird, right? You can't quite see a lot. So um, and usually uh, it's not the most helpful. That's why you really want to do it only with small samples and not too much variation. But I mean, you can kind of see that everyone's pretty much spread apart. Mostly all of these students are over. Um, uh, over, were born after the year of 1990. So, I mean, it gives you a really good visualization, I guess. But uh, that's just basically what a dot plot is. Not the most useful, but, I mean, it's still okay. Um, all right, so, um, so now we have the dot plot. That's one of the ways that you can display this type of numerical data. Um, another way that you can do it is with stem plots. Uh, now, stem plots um, are also with small samples. Uh, the only thing about stem plots is that they can be um, really, um, they can be crude to, to figure out. Um, now, this is basically, I gave you an example of it, and, and these are also called stem and leaf plots. Um, so in this part, we call the stem, oops, stem, and on this side, we're going to call it the leaf. So basically, all it is it tells you, and I, I even gave an example here, the key here, 8-0, it just means 80. Okay, so here, for example, this 3 and 4 means this 34. This 3 and a 4 again is just another 34. That means that there was two number 34s there. Okay, and then so on and so forth. So um, all it just does, you put in uh, one the the leftmost on uh, the rightmost digit is going to go on the right hand side and then the other digits are going to go on the left hand side that's basically all the stem and leaf plot will do for you um so like if you didn't have a computer with you um and you wanted to see what the distribution of it kind of was then you can do this if you kind of tilt your head over to your right hand side you can kind of see the distribution on this side you can kind of see what it what it kind of looks like if you want if you want to look at that <clears throat> So let's construct one really, really quickly. Um, so, um, and I put here on StackCrunch how you can go ahead and, and try to look for um, or construct a stem plot. So um, let's go ahead and construct one really quickly with this data set. I'm gonna draw first a line. And what I'm gonna put on this side, I'm gonna put in all the digits. So I'm gonna put the number four. So I put it all in order. So I'm gonna first put the number four. Then I'm gonna put the number five then six, so that's the 60s, 70s, then there's an 80s, the 90s, and then we have no 10s, because that's, so that's what we want to do. Even if we had no 50s, we still want to include it. We don't want to, want to be consistent here. So for the 40s, we only have a 46, so I'm just going to write a six here. So that means that that's going to be a 46. 50s, we don't have anything, so we're going to leave it blank. For the 60s, we have a 70, 67, we also have a 68. Uh, we don't have anything else. For the 70s, we have a 71. We have a 72, okay? So when we have a 72, we're just going to go ahead and do it twice because we have two of them. We have two 72s. We have a 74. We have a 75 and a 77. 
For the 80s, we're going to have an 81, an 84, and an 85, and an 89. And for the 90s, a 93, a 94, and a 95. So what this does, it kind of like lets you see what kind of like the distribution of this graph looks like if you were to tilt your head a little bit off to the right. <clears throat> That's basically what a stem is, stem, stem plot is. So it's a very quick and easy way to kind of see what the what the numbers kind of look like, what is the distribution of them, what do they look like. It's just a really good way to, quick and easy if you didn't have a computer, okay? Now, these two um, plots um, are useful, but I mean, if you have a lot of unique values like height, um, you might not want to do those two things. What you want to do is a histogram. So a histogram are actually very, very good plots. Um, what they do, they're just um, grouped in bins. The bars are drawn to show how many observations there are. And you want to use this when you have lots of data. So um, they're really, really useful. I gave you two. It's very similar to the bar plot, but this is now for numerical data. Um, so on the y-axis, you have the frequency, or you can have the relative frequency if you want to. And then here it tells you all the values. So for example, here was a number of shoes. So the number of shoes that students own, you can see that students own, tend to own between 0 to 10. And then it, it kind of goes off, levels off when it gets higher. So um, this is a really good way to um, to graph um, numerical data that's very, very unique. And here is also, if you want to play around with it, how do you go ahead and, and um, um, how do you say it? How do you go ahead and, and, and draw a histogram on, on StackCrunch? So, um, so those are the three different types of numerical um, uh, graphs that you, we're going to be learning this, this um or we're going to be using this semester. So um, in the next video, I'm going to show you an example.